Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here at my next Naruto Gaiden chapter review. This one's going to be for Chapter 5, The World to Come. Uh, before I get into the chapter review, I'll just mention briefly, uh, anyone who watches the Naruto anime will be happy to know that um, as of basically the episode that comes out today, the anime is back to canon episodes. That uh, tuning kind of uh, filler arc is over and as of this week canon episodes are back i'm going to watch the episode immediately after recording this uh, video so that's just a pretty uh, interesting thing finally um we're back and i'm pretty sure the idea is that the last filler arc was long enough to the point where it's basically going to be canon episodes until the end of the manga run 700 chapters so that should be interesting but anyway, chapter 5 of Naruto Gaiden, pretty good chapter, um, uh, overall I'd say I really did like it. Um, we got um, Sarada-Sasuke interaction, Sakura kind of being introduced back into the story, um, the villain, well we didn't I suppose learn more about him, uh, just getting to see him, like what his arm looks like, his head looks like makes you know gives you a few ideas maybe about what he is and just it's it, it's kind of it's a really good pace stuff is happening every chapter which um i definitely appreciate and so you know this is a pretty notable chapter we got kind of what the plot has been building towards sarada sasuke plus the villain is being developed and a little bit of extra like backstory with regards to why Sasuke has been away from the village, why he doesn't seem to know Sa Sa Sarada and what she looks like and all that. So yeah, the, the first place to really start the in-depth discussion is uh, Sarada meeting Sasuke. Of course, the basically ending of um, last chapter was not anything incredibly serious. It literally was just a case of he really has kind of forgotten what she looks like, having not seen her in so long. And it took basically her being really emotional that dad, are you going to kill me? To like basically make him realize that this is his daughter. Um, but the, the big thing, at least I take from this, is just that you see a little bit of kind of, what's, what's the best way to say this? A little bit of kind of, you know, like, did I really just kill, was I really just about to kill my daughter kind of in some of those panels when you see Sasuke's face, the little kind of bead of sweat on the forehead, that he was kind of a little bit upset that he about what he nearly did. Um, but on the whole, I think that the big thing that you take from this is just that Sasuke doesn't really react a lot to seeing Sarada. The, the, the main thing is just he's basically asking why is she here? He's so obsessed with this mission that he's on that that's all he can think about. And even after Sarada basically just explains everything really emotionally, has that kind of Naruto, Minato moment where, you know, the, they, the, the two of them first met and the emotion comes out. And just like, why aren't you ever home? Is Sakura my real mother? Um, that's the problem. How can you not realize this? And he's just like you know this isn't got nothing to do with you and it just you know him being so blunt with her you know you completely understand why she runs off like crying because she's so upset and it's left for naruto to go out to try and comfort her and say look he all he says really is just like look he's one of the best ninjas out there and um, which is a big thing for naruto to say about sasuke because he didn't add in the like me bit it's just kind of like Look, he, he's basically the best ninja. Um, but it still d leaves the, their relationship unresolved because he didn't confirm or deny anything. She asked about the picture with Karin and nothing was mentioned. Now, they, they basically make it out that there's no real big deal to the picture because um, <laughs> um, you see the kind of cut back to Sakura who's now awake and she's being told about this by Shizune and... She's just like, oh, that kid, did she really do this? And so she's going off to basically try and sort this out. That she, Sakura is heading to the scene of this big fight that's about to go down, which is interesting in itself that apparently, if it actually ends up happening, we're going to get the kind of reunion of older Team 7. 
um, which should be fun. And hopefully we get to see the kind of family interaction that we're kind of waiting for. See Sakura interact with Sasuke and see what their relationship is like. See Sakura maybe explain some of the stuff to Sarada and of course see Sasuke interact more like a father with Sarada. But either way, the, the, the reason that we get for why Sasuke has been away from the village for so long is because he thinks that there is some something out there more powerful than Kaguya from the obviously the main villain from the original series up to chapter 700 um, and he mentioned some sort of investigation about basically the ninja that kind of spawned gave birth birth to the white zetsu army and that he's kind of out there investigating that he's the only one who can track Kaguya with his Sharingan and that's why he's away from the village he's keeping it top secret no one can know which maybe explains why he's so angry about the fact that Sarada is here and gives out to Naruto for bringing the kids with him. But um, even but even still, it's just kind of this situation where Sasuke should, to some extent, be developed enough at this point to kind of understand why Sarada is so upset and be a little more like a father figure. Because... The, the big, I suppose, comparison that I'm getting here is just that Itachi, the whole thing between him and Sasuke was basically all because Itachi had this secret mission that he didn't tell anyone about. And Sasuke found out about this later on and everything was a mistake that kind of Sasuke knew. And then we're getting a similar situation here where he's got this secret mission that's stopping him from doing stuff with his family and it's kind of right now i wouldn't say tearing the family apart but it's it's just creating this rift in the family that sarada meets her father for the first time and this is what happens now again it, it's, it's important to kind of i suppose go back to the last chapter and kind of make the point about the fact that sarada is kind of changing things things for the uchiha clan this whole you know cursed clan thing is beginning to change because Obviously, the way she kind of woke up her Sharingan was through kind of love, joy, happiness about meeting her father for the first time. It wasn't this crazy, traumatic revenge experience. It was just this kind of positive emotion that woke up her Sharingan, which is different to basically every other Uchiha. So they seem to definitely be basing a lot of this current arc around... Uchiha stuff. Sharingan again being a really important plot point as we move into the villain side of this story where we find out that hey there are like at least 10 different Shin Uchihas. Maybe they all have different names. Maybe they are just all clones of Shin Uchiha. And then our main villain is trying to bring back the Akatsuki. And he has a Danzo arm but it's not actually Danzo. He has obviously the Sharingan stitch into one eye. He has a seems to have a normal Sharingan. And then he has other Sharingans in his head. Um going for this crazy like body modification, body horror type villain. Uh it seems to me like it's, it's this kind of weird mix of like Hidan and kind of Kakuzu in the kind of the whole stitching aspect of Kakuzu and then he looks a little bit like Hidan. But uh yeah, it's just weird. Um, I really don't have any much much speculation about what exactly this is about. The, we have little hints here, like I think Sheen mentioned something about Itachi in one of the earlier chapters. They're definitely Uchiha Sharingan focused, in that they seem to have all most all their techniques seem to be like copies of like other Sharingan users' techniques, like the the kind of Kamui, you know, to teleportation kind of interdimensional travel technique thing um, and uh, so on so I'm not really sure where this is leading other than the fact that him having so many Sharingan all with the kind of manga Kyo Sharingan awakened means that he potentially will put up a decent fight against Sasuke and Naruto because he can use like the techniques that basically destroy a Sharingan to use like the Izanami and uh, oh my god, I'm completely blanking on the two names. They're 
almost identical in the way this is a Nami and is a Nagi. I think are the two of them, the ones this crazy Genjutsu that like causes the person to like um, give up their current goal or something like that. There's a better way to explain it, but that's roughly the way I understood it. And then the other one is just that you can kind of like bring yourself back to life as if the last attack that kills you didn't actually happen. Genjutsu thing. Um, so that will, might keep him in the fight against Naruto and Sasuke, who otherwise are just too powerful for almost any villain to stand up in a decent fight against. Now, they are trying to save um, Chocho and Sarada, who are also on the battlefield, and Shin Uchiha is there. So, and especially if they bring in all the other Sheens, they could be very quickly outnumbered, which could be the only factor that turns things in the favor of the villains and you know maybe if Sakura arrives she'll end up being the kind of like hey team seven fends off the villains type thing and again you know this is a very short story so like are they going to do something like where like Sarada or Chocho gets kidnapped or something like that and um Sasuke has to go off and get Sarada back or something like that I'm not really sure where exactly the, the this is heading, but either way, they seem to be setting up that Sasuke is going to square off against this crazy Sharingan user guy, and potentially this will show Sarada something about her father that maybe she doesn't know yet, but the, the big thing is that, that she's going to get to see him in battle, and maybe Naruto is just going to stay in the background and kind of just fend off Shin Uchiha and protect Sarada while this is all going down, but... Um, as I said, the the chapter was good. I do want to know more about the villain. It seems interesting enough, but of course there's the obvious thing, just a little bit of a, too much of an obsession with, obsession with the Sharingan, all the visual jutsu stuff. It, it's definitely been a case in just Naruto, the first 700 chapters, that like, yeah, they overused it a bit, and now they're kind of using it again, like, n new idea, please, but... It's interesting enough, you know, with all the hints about Orochimaru's experiments, you know, the return of the Akatsuki, it's, it's, a, it's referencing a lot of things, but you don't know the full answer just yet. And then their plan seems to be something along the lines of capturing Sasuke or capturing Sarada, who are, as far as we know, the only two, you know, proper Uchihas with the potential to have the Sharingan. Which, you know, maybe her being captured by these two and, like, them confirming that, hey, you are an actual Uchiha or something like that is, is going to be a big thing for Sarada. But it seems to be something along the lines of, like, fake Sharingan users, real Sharingan users, and they are angry about what happened to Itachi. I don't really know. It, it, it's pretty confusing, but for me, the, definitely the highlight of the chapter was just the emotional situation with Sarada and Sasuke and Naruto trying to kind of really kind of help, like just make up for how kind of bad of a father Sasuke was in this scene and um, because it's one of these things where like I like Sasuke as a character but when he's always like this and like just like never seems to like change for the better it's really hard to just be like cool Sasuke is here because like by the end of the series he was you were just about beginning to be like oh Sasuke you're finally on the right track when he starts to kind of understand Sakura's feelings and now he's not understanding his daughter's feelings and it's just like change be good and um, but either way good chapter and um, in the comments let me know what your thoughts were on the chapter if you have any speculations about the villain or where exactly the plot's going Either way, I'm, I'm excited to see what uh, next week's chapter is going to be about and how the fight goes down. But um, that's been the review. Thanks for watching and bye.